When I do a lot of workshops for our corporate clients where we are conducting workshops for their employees, talking to them about personal finances, the way they can manage their investments better, what is right, what is wrong. Especially when we are talking to the new cadre that has joined, the new joinees, a very common thing that pops up is that I would like to start saving when I have enough money. I've just started my career. I don't have enough. I don't earn enough because I'm at the beginning of my career. So I do not want to save anything now. I will save when I have enough money. Well, this is a very common question and it is one of the biggest myths that we would try and bust by the end of this video. Harshwadhan Dawar and I'm from Wealth Cafe where we share with you ideas to help you make smart investing decisions. It's very common that when you start your career, uh, you are focused on the money that you earn, the focus there is to actually spend it and to use it for your uh, needs. So it's, it's very common that whatever money you make, it is spent towards getting that mobile phone that you always wanted, making that trip to maybe Kullu Manali where you wanted to always uh, take a holiday or maybe using it to upgrade your spends on buy that electronics, buy that airports that you always wanted. And eventually by the end of the month, you are left with very little in savings. And you think that I'm new in my career, I've just started, I don't have any pressures to save and I don't have enough, I don't make enough money that I should be saving. And when I have enough earnings as my salary goes up, the next hike that I get, that is when I will start saving. And uh, when the next hike comes, what do you think happens? Well, you, you would have guessed it right. Your phone, which was maybe earlier, a Xiaomi phone gets upgraded to a Samsung or maybe gets upgraded to an Apple iPhone. As your salary increases, the previous holiday, which was maybe to Kullu Manali, now is maybe in Thailand or maybe in Maldives. And the last time you bought the set of AirPods, which was a necessity for you, suddenly you're looking at buying a Bose speaker for your home, which again seems like a necessity as your salary increases, because it's very common that as your salary increases, your spends increase first. And again, you're back in the same cycle of, okay, I will save when I have enough, and that enough actually never comes up. It is very common uh, phenomenon or a behavioral trait that you would want to meet the challenges and answer the problems that are facing you today immediately rather than worrying about something that's going to come up 5, 10 or maybe 20, 30 years down the line when you decide to retire. That is why it is very common for you to have the mindset that you will save when you have enough, whereas the right way to do is to start saving today, irrespective of how much you earn. Thanks to a mutual fund, you can even start with a measly saving of 500 rupees a month and then increase it over a period of time. Set a target for yourself that you will invest at least 10% of your salary increase it to 12, 15, and then eventually 20, 25% over a period of time as your salary grows. With the growth in salary, don't just increase the quantum you save, also increase the percentage that you save because your needs are going to be taken care of. The wants are something which will never get over or be done with. So increase that amount of savings every time your salary increases. But before that, start saving now. Unless you don't start saving now, you're never going to think about increasing your savings. And to help you understand this, we, we have a very classic example, which I think I would have used in almost every workshop where we talk to freshers about the importance of starting saving now. In the example, we take two of investor A and B, wherein investor A starts a monthly SIP of 10,000 rupees per month at the age of 25 when he gets his first job. And by the time, he's 35, he's invested 10,000 rupees per month, that is 1,20,000 for 10 years, a total corpus of 12 lakhs he's invested. And for the sake of argument, let's say that he stops making any investments at the age of 35 for the sake of this particular example. Similarly, we take uh, investor B, who starts with an SIP only at the age of 35. At the age of 35, he thinks that, okay, now is the time when I should start saving. I've had enough fun for the last 10 years and I should start saving money now. And because he's starting late, he says that, let me start with a higher amount instead of 10,000 rupees a month, let me start at 15,000 rupees a month so that I can catch up with investor A. And I will invest it every month till I retire. So he puts aside an amount of 15,000 per month, that is one like 80,000 per year. And he does this till his age of retirement, that is at the age of 60 when he retires. 
so he's invested 180000 for 25 years resulting in a total corpus of 45 lakhs that has got invested over these 25 years in comparison investor a put aside 12 lakhs over the first 10 years of his of his career and investor b has put aside 45 lakhs over 25 years of his career now who do you think landed up with a larger corpus while on the face of it it may seem that investor b has put an investment which is almost four times of investor a but if you look at the corpus at the end of 25 years or rather look at the corpus when both of them have reached the age of 60 you will find that investor a lands up with a corpus of 5.3 crores whereas investor b lands up with a corpus of only 3.1 crores so what you see here is that although investor b started late and is investing four times more than what investor a uh, invested in order to catch up but just by the fact that he started 10 years late he actually lands up with a corpus which is much lower than the corpus of investor a what did investor a do right he started investing when he started his career he didn't start investing when he had the money because that is something which is very debatable and which always gets extended when you have the habit to invest from whatever you have that becomes a very good habit it grows on you and it allows you to increase your savings and in this case we are not even talking about investor a continuing his sip of 10000 for the rest of 25 years if you were to do that you will find the gap is huge right for the sake of highlighting the fact that how important it is to start investing today we've shown that investor a has invested for 10 years whereas investor b has invested for 25 years and still investor a is way way ahead of investor b i hope these numbers have driven home the fact that how important it is for you to start saving today rather than waiting and looking to start save when you actually have the money or you actually think you will have the money if you have any questions or any challenges that you face in starting your savings plan today do leave them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to assist you with that